Actually, I did uh, some snares in Serum the other day and posted about it on my Snapchat and then people started asking me how to do snares like this in Serum. So we could just make some snares in Serum, if that's cool. Like making fresh fresh snares, just using Serum and like some, some processing. But the only processing I used was EQ's distortion and compression. Maybe a, a frequency shifter to pitch it up and down instead of using a pitch shifter, but anything works. So making snares from scratch is, at the beginning it's a little bit of a hit and miss because, okay, let's make an inner patch, whoops, no, in a, in a preset. The first couple of snares, every time I make snares, are always shitty. Like, and then finally, they're like, okay, same with, there was like another round serum snares. The first ones are like, oh. meh. And then eventually, because it is a very, um, it's a very, like small grade of the right distortion, the right envelopes and everything and noise and all of that that you need to get right. But if you want to make a snare in Serum, um, all you need is one oscillator and the noise. So let's use a triangle or a sine wave. That's going to be our sub, like the low, the body of the snare which we want preferably somewhere between 150 and 400 hertz. So that's going to be the tone. So I pulled up a uh, EQ here so we can see where that tone is at. Actually, let me turn down the um, sidechain a little bit on the microphone because that's going to get tedious, I think, eventually. I'm just going to make it a little not that strong, just like... Yeah, just like a little bit, that's fine. Otherwise, I don't want this to get annoying. Could you try making some Neuro Trap? I don't know if I ever made Neuro Trap. What is that even? Young kids with their new genres these days. Okay. So you can see the fundamental here. So you want it somewhere around 200 hertz. So somewhere around here. Also, snares are very short. So I'm gonna use a lot of LFOs, all in envelope mode, to automate the volume of things, because we need those all like at different, different levels. So first of all, this is gonna be the volume of our low end. Sounds amazing. But that's where a snare starts. And then we need some noise, preferably anything. Awesome. Give that a curve as well. So that is basically where a snare starts. We can add a little bit of a pitch modulation to this. Don't worry, this is gonna this is gonna sound good in a bit. So I want some pitch modulation for the low end here. So it comes down from a high pitch. A little bit like a little bit like a kick drum does the coo. But I don't want it that extreme. Just a little bit. So we have this kind of slightly clicky initial transient, just a little bit. You can hear that click there, right? Then I also want to automate the pitch of the noise, so it goes or or something. On envelope mode. Depending on the noise sample, this is going to sound better or worse. Okay, and now um, we're going to make this actually sound like something. So most importantly, compression, EQing, and distortion. So we're going to start with distortion. It already sounds like something. So distortion right at the start will make the transient a lot nicer and a lot more crunchy, but then I want a little bit less distortion by the end. So we're going to modulate this with an individual control as well.
something like that. Uh, throw an OTT on it. This is getting somewhere. So now, the start of it sounds all right. There seems to be like a lot of noise at the end. So just the noise volume gets a bit of a fade out. Now it already sounds like somewhat of a snare. Uh, and then here are some of my additional techniques. What I like to do is I like to add some EQ peaks, preferably at, for example, uh, 1000 hertz, like a very wide one. Because that's, for example, where a clap sits. That's like, that frequency range sounds like, like, like the vocal ah, or the formant, that sits there. So if you want your snare to end on a kind of sound, you gotta accentuate the one kilohertz. And I also want this to come up from below. Oh. Okay, it doesn't end at one kilohertz right now. I'll use another peak for that. But this kind of gives it some sort of whoosh sound, like this whoosh upward sweep. A little bit like, think of a comical uh, Bud Spencer, Terrence Hill punch sound, like a whoosh. It starts with like a heavy initial transient and a lot of low end, but then by the end it's basically just a whoosh, something like that, like almost like a whip or something like Think of a sound like that. So you want this this end to evolve just to only higher frequencies. And, and then I'm gonna make another one. That'll go down from the top to the one one kilohertz thing. Also, volume's gonna be turned up over time. Somewhere on this, I don't want to overdo it. But yeah, these are already like the fine-tuned parts. The cool thing is now, just with this envelope, you have control over this whole shape, this whole shaping part with the EQ that I just made. So just changing this dramatically changes the sound of the snare. So that's kind of cool. All right, uh, now for a little more OTT on this. And then most importantly, EQing that thing. So instead of using Pro, uh, instead of using the Ableton standard EQ, I'm gonna use Pro Q2, because I need a little more uh, control over the details here. So low cut it all the way up to this point. Maybe give that low end a little more little more vitality. 500 hertz is something you don't really want in your snare, or in your drums at all, because that's where a lot of the fundamentals of the musical instrument sit, or a voice. So usually drums are very low end, little thumpy snare, nothing, and then one kilohertz is where it comes up again. Because you usually don't want it to clash too much with the fundamentals. That sounds kind of nice already, okay. Gonna give it that one kilohertz bump that I like so much. Get rid of a few annoying frequencies around three kilohertz. And sort of even that out a little bit. Maybe even add a little bit more distortion before that. without losing too much low end. Uh, and then maybe a transient shaper to bring the main transient up a little. So this is clipping like crazy now, right now though. But don't worry, just add a limiter and it is absolutely okay to have this clipping somewhat like this. As long as the transient sounds fine. This is really loud right now. I hope this isn't too loud for everyone. I can turn the channel down a little bit. So yay. The cool thing is now you can play this at any key and you have snares in the different tones. Cool. And then we could even 
start moving the noise pitch knob around or trying out different noise samples. I kind of like that, that's kind of cool. That's a heavy snare. And then if you want it shorter or longer, uh, since all of the envelopes and LFOs are synced to the host well, synced to the host tempo, you don't need to make them longer or shorter, you could just go and change your project tempo to be faster for a shorter snare or to be slower for a longer snare. Better than exporting it and then stretching it, because that way you're going to lose quality. So that is how I make snares in Serum. I hope someone found that interesting, but uh, yeah. Does need saturation. and Maybe another little OTT at the end. Just a little bit. But yeah, something like this. And then maybe, uh, so I would just make a bunch of these, like... Make this, export it, save it as a WAV file, then change the patch a little bit, uh, save it again until I have a whole folder of them like this. Yay. This one's actually pretty cool. I don't like the end. That's a little better. And then maybe use a frequency shifter to make it a little lower or higher, maybe even before the OTT. That's kind of cool. Okay, no sustain, a little bit of hold. That's kind of cool. So yeah, it's all about the envelopes and the right exponential or linear curves and all of that. Um, solid sounding snare coming from my shitty phone speaker. Haha. <laughs> Yay, that makes me happy. And if you're not happy with the transient, what you can do is just put the limiter instead of on this channel. It goes on the master. I need to bring this one up though. And then just get a transient from a snare that you like. For example, the, where is it? Like a bitch snare. And then just take the first millisecond. Like, well, no, that's a kick drum. Uh -huh. That's a snare. I guess you could even use the kick drum transient. That could work too. That'd be interesting. You hear how it like helps the transient a lot. Makes it a lot more clicky. I like that. Pretty loud, actually. So yay, that is a cool snare. Uh, let's export that. Like this, maybe. Yeah, let's just save that. Uh, how loud is this? Is this clipping? This is clipping a lot, but that's cool. I'm just gonna put it into the same folder where all the other ones went. Oh no, that's the base hit folder. Mm -hmm. Sample pack volume two. Actually never came out. I just call it like, I'll just call it that. Oh wait, this was still the wrong folder. Yeah, I started making like a sample pack volume two, but then I just liked the sample so much that I never really put it out. There's like so much old stuff in there that uh, I just use for myself now. So this goes in here. What's the latest one? 48. So this is 49. Let's see how this holds up to the others. Not bad. Like a standard neuro snare, sort of. Um...